Hello everyone, good morning po sa ating lahat. We hope you and your family are safe from COVID-19 and of course from the recent typhoons. It has been eight months since the community quarantine started. And since April, we have been conducting webinars. This is actually the 15th webinar of the Science Teacher Academy for the regions of the OSTSEI. Thank you for responding to our invitation and of course for being with us this morning to learn about promoting mathematical understanding in multiple representations. While learning still continues during the pandemic, we are praying and hoping that soon we will be able to see you in our face-to-face -face meetings. So for this webinar, may we request everyone to please mute your microphones and please be reminded that we will entertain questions after the talk. You may, however, type your questions in the chat box. So let me introduce our, our speaker for this morning. So our speaker for this morning graduated with a degree of Bachelor in Secondary Education, Major in Mathematics from St. Louis University, and he is a scholar of the Metrobank Foundation. He then earned his Master of Arts in Mathematics in April 2007 at Benguet State University, and eventually, and eventually, he, he is in progress. He is actually taking his PhD in mathematics education at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. And he's a scholar of the Czech Scholarship for Graduate Studies. So on study leave po siya ngayon. And with regards to his teaching experiences, he used to be a mathematics teacher at the Cordillera Regional Science High School in La Trinidad, Benguet where he was a math coordinator and he used to be a math lab advisor also. And now he is a full-time faculty member of the Philippine Normal University of the College of Teacher Development Faculty of Science Teacher and Mathematics, where he used to be a field researcher in 2014 and he, also, he was also an item writer of the PNU admission test in 2014. This, these are the extension services his extension services. He was a resource speaker of the training of science and mathematics teachers for teachers in content and pedagogy in Marikina. Also, he's a, he's a facilitator of the DOLE online refresher course and facilitator of the student learning enhancement for high school students of Carlos P. Garcia High School in Pandacan, Manila. And he was also a facilitator of training of teachers in grades two and three in Benguet. So with regards to his seminars and trainings, these are his international involvement. He was our uh, workshop speaker in the DOSC SEI Project Star International Conference in August 2019, where he talked about mathematical investigation. And he also joined the Project Star benchmarking activity in Taiwan, and also the science and math benchmarking tour in Malaysia and Singapore. And in the national level, he was a speaker he is a speaker of chat of different chat trainings and seminars, also in depth ed, and he also he was also invited by the Isabella State University, and of course he is our very own DOSD SEI Project Star trainer since 2014 when the Project Star started. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today is Sir Edward B. Macagne of Philippine Normal University. Sir Edward, take it away. Thank you, thank you, April, for the introduction. Okay, uh, magandang umaga sa, sa lahat. Um, the title for my sharing this morning is about promoting mathematical understanding through uh, multiple uh, representations. Now, I thought uh, this is very timely during the time of pandemic because in my experience with uh, other students in the neighborhood, they do math asynchronously. They do it uh, first, they do, synchronous, uh, they do synchronous sessions where the teacher will discuss something, then asynchronously, doon na sila gumagawa ng kanilang worksheet. That's why I thought of having this one, uh, this is very timely during the pandemic, pandemic because it is something that will uh, boost. It, it is something that boosts cognitive engagement because in in face-to-face -face classroom uh, we notice student engagement in terms of uh, cognitive 
cognitive engagement, behavioral engagement. Now we don't see any more behavioral engagement. We are now focused in, in, in time of pandemic, remote learning. We are uh, much more interested with cognitive engagement. That's why I thought of multiple representations to be a very timely pedagogy uh, in remote learning. To start with, I want to have uh, learning to see first. I will be discussing about learning to see, then I will be defining what mathematical representations are, then I will give some examples about it. Okay, now mathematical representations very related to learning to see, and I will start this by telling some sort of a story. Now, as, just like any other story, once upon a time, it will start once upon a time. Five men who had never seen an elephant were blindfolded and led to, to this animal. These men were led to an, to an elephant and they were asked to describe what they thought the creature would look like. And they went to the elephant and one felt, one man felt the ear and this one reached this trunk and the other one found the feet and this one touched the, you know, the very big stomach of the elephant and this one felt the, felt, felt the tail. And each one of them then described his version of the animal and each was in turn completely surprised at the contrasting view offered by the others in the group. Now we expect contrasting views because they were blindfolded. The elephant was very big and they approached the elephant from different angles. So we expect contrasting views. But then the good thing here the good thing is each person realized that not only was his perspective valid, but also that this applied equally to every member of the group. Now they opened their eyes and seeing the animal from a variety of angles, could they appreciate the complete picture? Now, uh, this story, this story leads us to the idea of to the idea of relational, relational thinking, which is covered by the solo taxonomy of Biggs and Collies. Now, if you're familiar about the solo taxonomy, I will, let's have a refresher, refresher uh, slides about it. Now, in the solo model, the solo stands for structure of observed learning outcomes. There are levels of thinking processes. First, pre-structural, followed by unistructural, multi-structural, then relational, then extended abstract. Now, if you approach the elephant, going back to the story, if you approach the elephant and somebody will ask you, what did you find out? And you're going to say, I did not find out anything. I don't know how to say. Then you are at the pre-structural level. You were not able to identify a single information the elephant after you touch. Now at the unistructural, you should have identified one information, identify one information each. One has identified information ear, the other about the leg, the other about the stomach, then the other about the for one part, one information about the And if you're going to look like, so if you're going to combine the information, it will now be at the multi-structural level. There were five information about the elephant that were not related. Now, if you're going to open your eyes, now if you're going to open your eyes and look at the elephant and relate all the information, now you are already at the relational level of thinking. And that is about the solo taxonomy. It is putting information together so that you can understand the big picture. Now, uh, this, 
this model is the backbone of my talk this morning, of my sharing about mathematical representations, because we need to see mathematical information, not individually, but relatedly as a whole. Now, how does this solo level look like in uh, mathematics? It's like this, I will be calling some to, to give information about about my example, how does this solo model look like in math? Now I have here, I have here 5, 9, 13, 21, 25, 29, 33. Uh, this, is, this is a pattern. Can I call on one to please give one information that you can say about the pattern? Uh, I, I will get at random. Ralph, Ralph, are you? Hello, Ralph. Sir LJ, please unmute Ralph. Oh, yeah, what, sir? Uh, Ralph, hello. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that these numbers are add numbers. They are? Add, add num numbers. Add numbers, okay. I'm going to write that. Any other information, Ralph, aside from being add numbers? Um, arithmetic sequence whose common difference is four. Common difference is four. four. Uh, arithmetic is, sequence. Yeah, yeah, arithmetic sequence. Yeah. The common difference gives you a sequence that is increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing, okay. So arithmetic sequence four and it's increasing. Thank you, thank you very much, Ralph. Uh, can I have one? I have here Sir Alvin. Sir Alvin Banal, are you? Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, Sir Alvin. Aside from being, you can see odd numbers. The common difference well, four. Actually, it is a finite arithmetic sequence. Uh huh. What else? Well, other than that, I can see no more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. sir. Alvin. Uh -uh. Can we have, can we try another? Mm. Mom Heren, your conception. I will unmute you. Mom conception. Ah, maybe we'll have mom conception sometime. <coughs> uh, Elsa, Elsa, Mom Elsa, Lim. Hello, LJ. Sir, um, they can actually unmute themselves, po. Ah, they can unmute themselves. Mom Elsa, oh, wala. Hello. It's a function, sir. Oh, Mom Elsa. <laughs> Are, function. Yes, sir. Alvin. Oh, oh, Alvin, Alvin. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You're back. It's a function. Sir Alvin. Uh, suppose I will close my eyes. Hello, Sir Alvin. Yes, sir. Suppose I will close my suppose I will close my eyes. Kasi yung, yung information na naibigay, add numbers, increasing by four, finite arithmetic sequence. And function. Okay? Yes. Now, so suppose these are the information, actually, these are unistructural information based on solo model that uh, we can derive from the given sequence. Now, my question is suppose I will close my eyes, I'll close, and somebody will describe to me the sequence. Can I get the picture 5, 9, 13, 17, 21? If they will tell me it's a sequence of odd numbers. Can I get 5, 9, 13, 17 immediately? Um, perhaps no, because there are other odd numbers such as 1, 1, and, one and 3. Well, yeah. they will start maybe starting with the number five, most probably mm -hmm. they can say that it is a sequence starting from five and there's a difference of four, something like that. 
Okay, so you are giving another information, start at 5, then difference of 4. Again, I will close my eyes, Sir Alvin. I will close my eyes and you're going to tell me, I have a sequence, it starts at 5, and there's a difference of 4. Now, you now think or you, you are convinced that I can picture out 5, 9, 13, 17, 21? Well, on my part, I can say that I can figure that out because uh, uh -huh. from my prior knowledge of sequence, I can determine that that is actually an arithmetic sequence. Uh, so I, I, I can now produce 5, 9, 13 if the information that I have starts at 5, difference 4. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. What about if I have this? It starts at 5, then it is followed by 1, followed by negative 3, negative 7. Well, I think there might be some, uh, some discovery or exploration before we can tell what the sequence is actually all about. Okay. Uh, so, thank you, thank you, Sir, sir Alvin. Welcome, sir. There are information you have mentioned, you have, uh, the, you have mentioned information about the sequence that uh, are not connected. They are not connected in the sense that if I'm going, if you're going to close my eyes and you're going to tell me your description, I cannot picture out 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. Meaning to say, those information that you have given are not related. They are not made sense so that it will produce or it will generate the sequence. Okay? Now, uh, it's good that you have given me information that will generate the sequence. One very, very good information that you have given, it starts at five. If it is starts at five, then you tell how will it now progress. So it is already increasing, as you have said, it is increasing. Now, it is increasing by how much? Then you gave me also the information increasing by four. Now we're going to put the information together so that we can picture out the whole now. So we're going to say the precise, dapat tumpak, so that it will give us the, it will give us the sequence. Uh, we can now better describe the pattern as it starts at five, so we say it starts at five and it increases by four each time. Get that? So it starts at five and it increases by four each time. Now that kind of description will eliminate now what I have said to Sir, Sir Alvin kanina. Paano kapag may five, it starts at five, tapos there is a difference of four, tapos ang sunod pala sa five ay one. So in no way that one follows from five, if I'm going to say it increases by four. So we were able to put we were able to put at least three information together in order to visualize the sequence. Key information, I repeat, it starts at five. Is it increasing or decreasing? Now in this case, it is increasing, then increasing by how much? So those information uh, were enough to describe completely the pattern. Well, uh, the other information that you have given, it is an arithmetic sequence, yes, it is add numbers yes it it's it's a function yes but the three key information that will generate the sequence were the ones we identified a while ago okay hmm. another example donald is starting to develop covid like symptoms and sneezes into his hand Donald forgot to wash his hand and meets up with his friends, Mark, Bum, and Len, and shakes their hands. Now, they all share the same symptoms. Mark, Bum, and Len each meet up with three more friends and pass the virus onto them. If this pattern continues for four more times, how many people will have the virus? Show all your work. Kunwari, nangyari ito sa klase. Now, we're going to discuss. Uh, 
let's try to make sense of the problem. We have here Donald. This is one information we have Donald. Uh, by the way, if you're going to ask your student, what information can you give from the problem? And they only give Donald. At what level they are? And at what level is that student? According to Solo, wala pa siyang naibigay na information. Donald lang ang alam niya. We classify that child as uh, under the pre-structural level. Kasi kailangan sa pagbabasa ng problem, kailangan may, may ma-produce ka na information. Kapag wala kang na-produce, according to solo model, you are at the pre-structural level. Ito yung mga estudyante na nagsasabi ng kaagad-agad, I do not know. Okay? Ngayon, kapag nagbigay siya ng information na isa lang, nasa uni-structural level siya. Ngayon, kapag marami siyang naibigay, nasa multi-structural level. Na tignan natin, mag-uni-structural level muna tayo kasi ganun ang progression ng thinking natin. Mag-uni-structural model muna tayo. We have here Donald. Nag-cough siya, nag-sneeze siya sa kaniyang kamay. Tapos nag-shake hands siya kay Mark, kay Bam, at saka kay Len. So we were able already to identify one information. So we are, if that is the only information that we have given or we have identified, then we are at the unistructural level. Another information. Si Mark, si Bam, si Len, nag-shake hands din sa tatlong iba pa. So we have here these three. Yan, yung tatlo na yan, yung tatlo na yan. And this one continued. Yung kina-shake hands ni na Mark, Bam, at saka Len, nag-sneeze din sa kanilang kamay, tapos nag-shake hands with uh, 3H. That one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to say, if you try to, you know, uh, take a back and namnamin konte kung ano ang itsura ng ating 3 diagram, and try to understand the question. The question is asking you to determine how many people were already infected. Now you should be counting. Now you're going to say, aha, so this is now an aha moment. The aha moment is you now try to identify an information that will lead to possible relational thinking. And the aha moment here is, we have here, Wait, not yet that. This one. Si Donald, isang tao lang. Tapos, nag-shake hands siya sa tatlong iba pa. So we have here. Then, yan. Then, yung dito sa column na ito, kung bilangin mo yan, mayroong kang mabibilang na 27. Now, you is try to think more and you will notice that as if there is a pattern that it starts at one and, and it, how does it increase? It is an increasing pattern. It starts at one, then uh, it is multiplied by three each time. Now, I will tell myself that if this person's over here, they will shake hands with three other persons, then I should just be multiplying 27 by 27 by 3. Right? I should just be doing that. So in this case, there is, if, so if I'm going to continue this one four more times, then we have one, two, three, four, four more times, then I'm going to multiply 27 by 3, then I will have 81. I'm going to multiply that by three again. I will have 243. Then I'm going to multiply that by three again. Then I will have now 729. Then I'm going to multiply that by three again. Then you have that. Now, let us identify where is the relational thinking? I know first. Multi-structural 
thinking, multi-structural, information that are not yet related. The multi-structural level, according to solo taxonomy, ay yon ang level mo kapag na-produce mo yung tree diagram. You see the tree diagram? So this is one information, this is another information, this is another information that you were, but you were not yet relate, you were not yet able to relate the three information that you have. The moment that you were able to identify the pattern, because the diagram has already led you to a certain pattern, then mayroon na tayong tinatawag na relational thinking. Kung baga sa klase, masaya na tayo kasi naabot natin yung relational relational thinking. Okay? Then, sasabihin mo, ah, the question is asking me how many people uh, would be infected if, if that sequence is going to happen four more times, then all you need to do is what? Shall we... Shall we stop at 287? Is that the answer immediately? No, you should be able to realize that you need to add all. So adding all, so we have 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81 plus 243 plus 729 plus 287, 2187. I-add natin lahat yan and that will now be equal to 3280. Okay? So na na medyo na nakukuha na ba yung yung solo model yung pag-identify ng information tapos mag-identify ka pa tapos kapag nakapag-identify ka pa it try mo nang i-relate para you can uh, make sense of you can make sense of uh, you can make sense of the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, one way to promote mathematical uh, mathematical understanding at the relational level of the solo model is the use of representations. Now, let me define what representations are. Now, representations are actually images that help students learn mathematics, whether they are physical, visual, symbolic, verbal, or contextual. Now, in elementary uh, or in mathematics education program, in professional professional education, if we say physical, in the teaching of mathematics, physical, these are the manipulatives. When we say naman visual, these are diagrams, tables, charts, like those. If we say symbolic, symbolic, we have the uh, ito na yung abstract level. Kasi sa elementary, ang tawag nila dito, concrete pictorial abstract. So kapag concrete physical, kapag pictorial visual, kapag abstract symbolic, so kapag sinabi natin y that is equal to mx plus b, then that is abstract. Now verbal, verbal, it's either written or spoken. Those are also representations. Now suppose one student was not able to write something on the paper and you're going to interview why you were not able to, to write something on the paper. And maybe the, that student has difficulty putting into visual representation his ideas. Now, if you're going to interview the child, that child would probably resort to verbal representations. And another one kind of representing mathematical ideas is through contextual forms, okay? Now, the good thing about uh, representations help is they help our students organize their thinking and try various approaches that may lead to a clearer understanding and uh, solution. And... Uh, uh believe me that in the classroom if there is only one entry by which the students are allowed to represent their thinking parang ang hirap makakuha or ang hirap magpagawa ng ng performance task kung ang gusto lang ay kung ano yung paraan ng teacher yun din ang paraan ng estudyante kasi ang hirap uh, uh, representations like this 
kung ano yung paraan ng estudyante, yun yung tinatawag na internal representation. Kung ano naman yung paraan ng teacher sa pagtuturo, yun yung tinatawag na external representation. And often than not, internal representation and external representation, uh, they conflict. That's why since there is a conflict between the two representations, then it will be highly suggested that we allow other representations to happen. Okay. Now, uh, several students struggle on how to proceed when presented mathematical problems. Why? Because they allude that difficulty or that struggle in ability to solve a problem because they could not remember the necessary algorithm or formula. If you are, if if the teaching and learning is only based on a procedural understanding of things that if once you forget the formula, you are already at loss, then it is really very difficult to proceed with a mathematical problem. But then if you are going to, pri to provide other ways on how students would approach a problem, then that, that is much, much uh, better. Then we adhere to the principle of no child left behind kasi mayroon siyang kayang gawin. Okay, kahit man lang sa pag-identify ng information. Now, many students need learning opportunities about alternatives to algorithms and formulas. And that is, that is one thing that I want to focus on for the rest of my, for the rest of my uh, sharing. Now, multiple representations. Mathematical ideas can be represented in more than one way. As I have identified a while ago, we have physical representation, visual representation, symbolic, verbal, and contextual. And these five methods of representing mathematical ideas, they should be connected to each other. Now, you see, you see that each way, each way, for example, physical, it's connected to more others, four more others, and it would then kapag ano kapag mahusay ka sa mahusay ka sa combination kuha mo agad kung ilang ilang ano ilang arrows yung mga anjan but anyway ang importante ay dapat nakoconnect si physical sa visual si visual sa symbolic si verbal sa contextual si contextual sa physical or any two combinations of these ways of uh, representing representing ideas mm -hmm. now I am going to give one example on how to do this in face-to-face -face learning. This is applicable during face-to-face -face learning and also remote learning. Also very, very applicable because it is promoting cognitive engagement, which, which what we desire for cognitive engagement is what we desire in math. Example, here, okay. Dito sa gitna, we have a problem. Now, if you're going to look at the problem, may mga blanks dyan. And, you know, uh, our educational system, our basic educational system identifies problem posing of a problem as a skill. Okay? So this is a, some sort of a problem posing. I have here a situation. Now, each student should try to input something. For example, you want to save for a what? So you need to identify what you want to say for. And ito ay nagbabari na ang kanilang ilalagay. Diba, ganun naman ang ating, ano, ganun naman ang ating performance task. Maganda kapag may variation. Okay? Now, you have 2,000 pesos right now. Your weekly allowance is 500. And you also spend for transportation to where your school is. And you want to save for for something that costs something. And how the question is, how long will it take you to save uh, for that? One thing that is good about here is, all students have the opportunity to identify what they want to save for. So hindi pwedeng malabong magkablank si problem. Kasi lahat ng mga iyan may maibibigay. Now in teaching and learning, this is what 
we say or what we try to have, uh, this is the kind of problem that we like to have, it's low threshold. Kapag sinabi natin low threshold, dapat lahat ng estudyante encouraged or easily invited to, to participate in the problem. So in this case, you want to say for something, okay, identify that something. Then, of course, there are other information that limits you in identifying for something because there is an initial savings, you have something like this, and it will also consider your allowance. Mukhang hindi, hindi siguro tugma yung kanilang allowance dito sa given na situation, but then this is also one thing to, <clears throat> to let them think of something even if it is beyond their reality, okay? I'm going to show you a finished output here. Okay, this case. Yung isojante ang gusto niya gitara. Okay, gusto niya ay gitara. Tapos, may 2,000 siya ngayon. Ang weekly allowance niya, 500. Tapos, uh, nag-spend din siya ng transportation going to going to school. I, I think this is still good even if we are in remote learning. Anyway, the normal the normal way is face to face temporary abnormal naman kung saan tayo ngayon itong remote learning this is not the new, this is not the new normal this is the temporary abnormal so mawawala din ito at babalik tayo sa uh, face to face learning now you want to save for a guitar the student wants to save for a guitar that costs 5880 uh, this is a reasonable price i bought one at 7000 plus how long will it take you to save for the guitar? Okay? Now, dito sa problem posing, saan pinakamadali na gagawin? Sa table, sa graph, sa algebraic, uh, algebraic rule, uh, verbal rule? Ang pinakamadaling isunod ay ang table. Sige, puntahan natin ang table. So for the table, we have here the number of weeks. We have the total allowance. Tapos, naglagay siya dito, expenses for transportation, expenses for lunch. So mayroon pa pala siyang expenses for lunch. So there is a column savings per savings per week. Now, I, I put here zero. I did not I do not want to start at one. I want to start at zero because that is very, very important for me to accommodate the information about the 2,000 pesos. Because this is initial. Hindi pa siya nabigyan ng allowance, may 2,000 na siya. That's why I want to put here zero. At zero weeks, how much uh, does the student have? Meron tayong 2,000. Tapos, yung total allowance, ilagay mo lang dyan, 500 for the first week, then nag-increase, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. Then for the transportation, nag-i-increase. Now we have savings now per week. Uh, one thing that is nice about uh, going into tabular, tabular pattern ahead of the others is for us to see information that we can relate. Now, can you see here how in the savings per week, because this is very le relevant to, very relevant to the question, how long will it take you to save for the guitar? Then we are going to take a look at the column for savings per, savings per week. And this savings is a function of the number of weeks. Now, if you want, Depende sa isudyante kung saan, saan maglilid ang kanyang line of thinking, the thinking process. Because the thinking process, it may lead that student to a graphical pattern or to an algebraic rule. Now in this case, itry natin si graphical pattern. Kapag igagraph natin ito, so importante yung ito, zero yung 2,000, tapos nag-gaganyan. Nag, nag now, one thing, kapag nakakita, common mistake is like this. Uh, kapag may nakita silang, nakita silang dots, dots, they, some students are tempted to draw a line. 
right? In practice, some is ten ten. Hmm. Now, kapag nagdrawing sila dito ng line, Ralph. Hello, Ralph. Are you again there, Ralph? Yes, po, sir. Nandito po. Ralph, Ralph, is it right na magdraw ng line to connect the dots? I think no, sir. Oh, oh, no. Correct, correct. Yes, no. Po. no, no, no. No, no. Why can we not draw a line? Kasi po ang ating representation ng dots ay per week. Per week. Yes, And po. what can you say about weeks as a data? Uh, continuous or not? Discrete. Discrete. So discrete. Yes, po. So discrete. it's not continuous. Suppose I will draw a line, Ralph. Suppose mm -hmm. I will draw a line. Suppose I will draw a line. Yes, sir. Meaning to say, my savings na nangyari within seconds, minutes, like yes, that. Po. Does it, yes, po. Does, does it make sense? No, sir. Kasi ang, ang goal is para to save per week. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> problem. Okay. Thank you um, very much. Ralph. Okay, po. Yeah, that is one thing that is supposed to be emphasized. Kaya kapag dapat kapag nagtas ito, kasi sigurado ako kapag ito ang naibigay sa estudyante, mayroon at mayroong magda-drawing ng line. And that is one thing good. That is one thing good kasi na-expose ang misconception. At baka yung iba, misconception din nila. Okay? Now, if some misconceptions are exposed, that's an opportunity already to, to write the misconception. Uh, sabi nila, alternate conception. Uh, the, I, I, I like to refer it as misconception. Kasi nga, mali. Okay? So yung mga ganyan. Nakuha niya yung table, pero dito naman sa graph, nag-straight line siya, which is hindi pwede. Okay. Now, uh, suppose tapos na yung graph, nag-proceed na yung estudyante sa algebraic rule. Now, the algebraic rule here is only this one, the 2,000 plus 150 W. W, of course, in, in weeks. Okay? There are verbal representations here. It says, savings is extra money left from allowance, remove expenses, yeah. 2,000 plus extra money left per week, and that will give you the total savings per per week. Okay. Now, uh, 2,000 plus 150. Can we have comment about the algebraic rule? 2,000. Total savings is equal to 2,000 plus 100, uh, 150. Can we have? Can I have a random mom conception? Are you na? Tinawag po, po kita kanina. Mom conception, are you there? Okay. So I hear no response. What about Darren? Darren? Uh, Darren, sir or mom? Darren, hello, Darren. Okay. Uh, Dom. Sir Dom? Okay, meron uh, siguro hindi nila ano, hindi nila, wala silang speaker. Wala silang speaker or medyo mahina ang signal, hindi mas hindi na rin naririnig konti. Can we go back to Ralph? Ralph? Yes, sir. Hello, Ralph. Yes, po. Yeah. Can you now incorporate, kasi sabi mo dito, hindi pwede ang line, right? Yes, can, you now, can you tell me about the domain for W? The domain would be hmm. whole numbers, sir. Whole numbers? Kapag sinabi yes, natin whole numbers, ano ang ibig sabihin ng whole numbers? Um, it starts with 0, 1, 2, and ah. di ba sir, yun po yung uh, nagre-represent ng weeks. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Ralph, 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 Sir Ralph, yes, po. do you think that is important that we put the domain for W? Um, yes, kasi sir, if we just um, look for, uh, kung titignan natin yung algebraic rule with that 2,000 plus 
150 W para magkakaroon ng assumption na pwede rin yung W as one half, as one third. But if we put restriction as W as it is a set of whole numbers, pwede okay. na pwede magkakaroon ay magkakaroon ng limit for the value of W which will kung, kung i-relate natin sa graph which is tutugma. Okay. Now, thank you, thank you very much, Ralph. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, yan. Thank you. Uh, it is really important that we put the domain for W because it will add information on how the student uh, thought about the problem. Kung paano yung nakikita ang the whole picture. Okay? Now then on, from algebraic rule, we can put this rule into words. Ito yung sinasabi natin verbal. We have here, because 2,000 is first savings, add to it 150 every week to get total or total savings. So, pasensya na, gan ganyan ang mga, kung ma-encounter nyo ito sa totoong buhay, so ganito ang magiging itsura ng ating uh, ginagawa na multiple, multiple representations. Now, if you're going to ask, I will ask na lang, not me. Sir Eric Raquel, are you there? Hello? Sir Eric? Wala. Uh, Ma'am Jasmine, Jasmine Bogakon? Hello, you're there? Hi, Ma'am Jasmine. Okay. I hear none. Uh, Ralph, Ralph? Yes, po, sir. Ralph, yes, you're there? Po. Yes, po. I hear you say it. Yeah, Ralph, thank you for actively participating. My, my question is like this. Suppose you're the teacher. Yes, po. At ito ang output ng estudyante. Uh, sa tingin mo ba kapag narating itong algebraic rule at saka itong graphical rule, naiintindihan na ng estudyante itong problem? Um, at least na there is already mathematical understanding? Siguro sir, not fully. Kasi kung titignan natin yung algebraic rule and the graph, magkakaroon mm -hmm. siya ng contradiction because in the algebraic rule, and siguro naitindihan niya, sig siguro po is um, nakukuha niya yung thought, pero hindi lang sapat or hindi, or sabihin natin, may kulang lang dun sa kanyang mga representation. Pero I, I think mm -hmm. there is a Parang ano sir eh, parang, may pupul parang pinupuntahan pero di niya mismo matumbok yung kung ano yung technicality dun sa part na yun. Like sa algebraic, uh -huh. like sa algebraic rule niya in relation to the graph sir. Kung titignan uh -huh. lang natin alone yung algebraic rule, it is just a equation of a line. Mm -hmm. Na walang restriction. Ibig sabihin, kung titignan lang natin si algebraic rule itself, the graph will be look like a straight line. Hindi yung sa graph, katulad nung nasa graph natin na dapat, that's kasi ang kanyang savings is every week hindi naman dun sa hindi naman every second katulad uh -huh. sinabi niyo sir, every second, every minute every hour, but every week so okay. I think um, katulad sinabi ko kanina sir, I think may understanding si student, pero hindi niya lang siguro matumbok yung dapat na ano ba yung maging representation yung graph Yun okay. na naman ang... <laughs> Hindi na communicate na masyado. Apo. Yun parang, ba? apo. Pero kung titignan natin sir yung kanyang mga sagot, parang it leads to, it leads to the answer pero hindi niya lang talaga makuha yung answer. Okay. 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 Ang tindi ni Ralph, matindi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph. Okay po. No problem, sir. Ang tindi mo. Uh... That is a perception of one teacher. Now, if I'm going to ask me as a teacher also, napakasaya ko na na narating, narating ang graph at narating yung algebraic rule. Kung ano man yung pagkukulang, gaya ng paglalagay ng domain, kung ano man yung pagkukulang na yun, we can easily tell that to a child na importante yung paglalagay ng domain. Uh, dito din, kapag dito sa graph, kapag nag-straight line siya dyan, kasi 
uh, worry, this is in remote learning and this this task is going to happen asynchronously. Ipaprocess pa naman ito sa pagdating ng synchronous session. So during the synchronous session, we now choose the uh, we now choose outputs na gusto nating i-highlight. For example, nag-draw dito siya ng line yung estudyante. Then that is uh, an opportunity for us to ask more questions kapag nag-draw yan, tawagin natin kung sino man yung nag-draw ng line na yan, tapos maaari natin sigurong tanungin, magkano ang savings, for example, after one hour? Kasi nag-draw siya ng line, so pwede natin siyang tanungin, magkano ang na-save after one hour? Uh, doon na mag -i struggle si student to come up with an answer, which is actually, it is not already the scope of, of the problem. There is already a struggle, and you will notice that the child or the student will realize the mistake by himself. Okay, so putting a line there is not actually a waste of time because it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to talk more of other mathematical ideas, misconceived mathematical ideas. Okay, now in this case, uh, can I relate it to solo? Here. Kasi ito, kunwari, itong table ang una niyang ginawa. Kasi pwede rin na, oh, table nga. Hindi pwede mag-proceed sa graph. Table talaga ang unang gagawin. Pwede pa siya mag-proceed sa graph? Huh, parang ang hirap na proceed ka sa graph with this kind. So, kailangan talaga mag-proceed dito muna tayo sa table. Now, uh, in the table, kapag naglagay ka, finil out mo itong mga columns na ito, ang dami mo ng information na na-identify. Ang dami mong information na na-produce. So you are at the multi-structural level. Now, if you can see the symbol, this is the symbol, itong three bars na ito, three lines, three bars. This is the symbol for multi-structural level kasi nakapag-identify ka ng madaming information. Only that, you were not able to relate information. Saan mo sila na-relate? Because this, this tabular information has led you to think about a graphical pattern. Now, dito mo na siya. Dito ka na nakaisip naka, naka ng higit pa dito sa tabular information. Now, you are already at the mul uh, no, relational level of thinking which is already good. Others in, in, in research, others, they say once you have reached the relational level, you have already achieved what we call conceptual understanding. Because in math, when we, we are more interested of the conceptual understanding. Because if you have the conceptual understanding, most likely you also have the procedural understanding. What we desire for, we desire for both. Both procedural and conceptual. Now, kapag narating mo na dito sa ano, narating mo na rin itong algebraic rule. So, Maaari naman kasing yung islan hindi niya ginawa yung graph. Nag-proceed siya sa algebraic rule. Relational understanding pa din siya. Pero sa class kasi, sa worksheet, hinihingi yung... Dito sa particular worksheet na ito, hiningi yung graph. So kailangan mong kailangan natin gawin. Pero kapag nag-proceed immediately dito, masaya na tayo kasi nasa relational level. Ngayon, kapag nag-extend ka pa, Ito yung extended abstract. Now, in Bloom's taxonomy, this is the creation part. You should be able to create something. Now, nag-extend siya. Sinabi mo, what if? What if my parents will increase my allowance? Then how long will, will how, how long can I save for my guitar? So that is already creation. That is now the extended abstract. Ngayon, ito naman ay, uh, we desire this one for the bright ones. Kapag narating ng, ng, uh, narating ng ibang classmates, edi masaya na tayo. But then, sa akin, pwede kahit na itong extended abstract, kahit na hindi na marating. Pero kapag narating, masayang masaya na tayo kasi nakakreate na. At least man lang, in one worksheet, marating ang relational level. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is uh, how to relate different ways of looking at the problem, different ways of uh, representing. Now, it is most likely that in the classroom, most likely, maraming isudyante may maisusulat mas mag attempt to, to engage with the problem rather than remembering or 
uh, requiring a single representation na nakita nila from the picture. At saka kailangan din, kapag turo tayo, dapat madami ding multiple representations ang ating ginagawa. Okay. Uh, I will get the backbone of what I have done. Now, uh, something in the middle, we are going to put here number patterns. Depende kasi kung paano maggagawa din yung teacher. So in this case, we have number patterns. Then we have here the table, the graph formula, written description, picture, contextual, uh, contextual, contextual case. These are ways on how we, we represent these are ways on how to represent the pattern. Ngayon, ang ano lang, ano ang inaasahan natin na dapat ilagay sa bawat, uh, bawat shape na mga ito? Sa written description, we need to, ito yung kumbaga sa pattern, this is we need to identify the initial amount and the rate of increase or decrease. Now, if you remember our first exercise, it is very important that you identify the starting point of the pattern, which nag-start sa five. Now we proceeded on to the to the problem on problem to the to the activity on problem posing that is savings. It is also important that we identify the two thousand that is the initial savings and the rate of increase or decrease, increasing by how much, decreasing by how much para ma-proof yung pattern. Now, picture. Now, if you have a picture, uh, it's also nice if we draw the pattern as well as next. For example, this is figure one. If you're going to have a picture, this is figure one, then followed by figure two, figure three. Okay? Now, for the context of the pattern, for example, here, a taxi has a flag down rate of 40 pesos and charges something every 300 meters. So maybe that is one context where we put in number pattern. And for the table, it is very important to see what happens at x equals zero. And what uh, do values increase or increase? Paano sila nag increase Paano nag, nag uh, decrease That is something very, very important that should be reflected in the table. Kasi nga, if we talk of linear equations, dapat mindful tayo so y is equal to mx plus, plus b. Okay? Now for the graph, one thing that we highlighted, is it discrete yung data na ginagamit? Discrete? Kasi kapag discrete, we need only dots. If the data that we are making representations for are continuous, then we should be drawing the solid line. Okay? Now, in the formula or equation, yan. We have y that is equal to mx plus b if it is linear. Kapag quadratic, mag-iiba. And if it is y equals mx plus b, m is very, very important because it will tell them us how, how, how does the pattern increase or uh, decrease, tapos yung initial value na B. Okay? So, ito ang backbone ng ating ibinigay na example kanina. Another one. Here, I am presenting one example na hindi nag -i start sa gitna. Hindi dito nag -i start nag -i start siya sa graph. So, the entry point is the graph. If the entry point is the graph, the next thing that is nice to produce is the table. Okay? We can uh, produce the table. One, one, yun, 15. Ma ma produce yung uh, table. Siguro, pwede na rin from the table, pwede tayong punta sa algorithm. Then, naman kasi from graph, from graph proceed to uh, the table. From graph, you can also proceed to the rule. The rule here is start at ten. Sanape. Start at ten, increase by five each time. Okay. Sama ng pirit. Ah, 
for the picture, ano kaya maaring picture natin dito? Picture na ang una ay ang una ay first. Kasi dapat yung una ay hmm. Sige. Bahala na yung estudyante mag-isip kung paano niya ito i-visualize. I am thinking of I am thinking of row house but then kapag row house kasi parang kukulangin ako sa number of number of matchsticks na gagamitin kung matchsticks ang andito sa ating y axis. Okay? Tapos yung context kapag row house yung picture, ilagay mo lang dito we are building a row house. Okay? Pattern or a sequence of row houses. Yun lang ilagay nating context. Okay? So the starting here is the graph. Dito naman, ang starting, you enter engagement, cognitive engagement with the activity through the diagram. So we have here a picture of the diagram. At nasabi dito, this is the third pattern. So kung third ito, malamang kung third ito, ang isang, ang isang, Figure one. Figure one should be ito lang. Nakikita itong ito lang siguro. Ito lang yung figure one. If you can see this, itong house na ito. Kung ito ang figure one, it, it makes sense. It makes sense na ang figure two ay itong dalawa na ano, itong dalawang houses na connected. Okay? So going to fill in the table, we start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We start at 9. So here, if there's only one house, 9 matchsticks use. Kung matchsticks man ang ginamit. Kapag 2, 2 houses na, ilan ang idadagdag nating matchsticks para mabuo yung, yung uh, figure 2? We have 9 ito, so 10, 11. So, mag a add tayo ng 11. So, the pattern is increasing by 11. So, it starts it starts at 9 and increases by 11 each time. Okay? So, meron na tayong written rule for the pattern. Now, we can graph. Then, we, we now do algebraic uh, rule. Now, the question. There is a question here. The problem is, uh, <clears throat> ilang row, hindi ko masyadong kita, pero parang ilang rows, Ilang rows ng bahay ang andon kapag 127 matchsticks ang nagamit? Okay, parang ganun. Kapag 127 matchsticks ang nagamit, ilang rows of houses ang, ang na-form? So, ang gusto ko lang ipakita is start sa uh, uh, it depends. Okay. Uh, key benefits. Key benefits of multi multiple representations. This is my last slide. Uh, maybe you can now think of questions. Key benefits. First, it gives students a view of the big uh, picture. Okay, now uh, why, why so? Of course, you have information that you need to relate together so that you can view the big picture. That is one key benefit. Another, it highlights the view of mathematics as an interconnected body of ideas and processes rather than a list of individual skills to cover. Now, the students then realizes that mathematics is a process of sense making rather than uh, memorization. Ah, uh, yes, kasi even if you forgot, even if you forgot, you forgot some formulas, if you can make sense of the information given in the problem, then most likely you can still answer the question in the problem. Okay? Even if you forgot some formulas. So, dapat 
Ganon. Next, multiple representations emphasizes that there is one way to think about concepts and uh, solve problems. Okay, so those are benefits that we can get from uh, multiple representations. Okay, before I I end, can I have a recap of recap of my uh, sharing? For this morning, I talk about mathematical understanding and try to relate it to the solo model. And we desire a level in the solo model at the relational level of uh, thinking, relational or even more, the extended abstract. The solo model has stages, number one, pre-structural. Kapag pre-structural, you were not able, you did not yet start with a problem. Binasa mo lang, hindi mo naintindihan. Maybe in that case, there is a problem with reading comprehension. Okay? There is a problem with reading comprehension. There's a problem with the terms used in the problem kasi baka masyadong technical yung terms na ginamit. And in math, we really need to use our technical terms kasi field natin, we need to use technical terms. Hindi pwedeng palitan mo yung technical term. Hindi mo pwedeng i-reword ang slope. Kumbaga, okay? Ganyan, kapag pre-structural, you did not yet start with the problem. If you are at the unistructural level, you were able to identify one information. One information lang. Kapag you identified other information, you are at the multi-structural level. Now, the moment you were able to fit together multi-structural information and begin to see a big picture, begin to see a mathematical idea and begin to see a pattern, begin to, to see that lead you further to answering the question presented by the teacher, then that case, you are already at the relational level. At the relational level, dapat nagamit mo na yung information. Uh, information are not already seen as individual information, but they already help uh, the student to picture the whole scenario. <clears throat> Ngayon, kapag yung isudyante ay nag what if, ano kapag ganito? Ah, super saya na natin dyan kasi yung bata ay nasa extended abstract level uh, solo taxonomy or the solo model. Okay? And one thing to achieve relational, relational thinking based on solo model is the use of multiple representations. In multiple representations, we identified physical, physical representation, visual representation, uh, contextual representation, graphical representation. What else? No, physical, visual, verbal, contextual. Uh, symbolic, symbolic representation. Symbolic representation, ito yung y equals mx plus b. Yun yung mga ganon. Yung walang walang ano walang ano lang y equals mx plus b lang yung panggulat sa mga bata kaya nila ayaw nila kasi abstract nga y equals mx plus b ang hirap i-access ano si m ano si x ano si y and you know kapag nakita ito ng mga estudyante abstract agad nakita ng estudyante ito they will fear mathematics if the x's and the y start to fall no okay then if you have already the multiple ways of presenting ideas and you're able to relate them together we call that now the multiple we call that multiple representation okay it helps us in 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 thinking it guides our our thinking it directs thinking <laughs> so sir lj sir edward Oh, you are Thank April. Thank you so much, Mom Mr. Edward, April. for that comprehensive uh -oh. discussion. So, let as mathematics teacher, let us teach our students how to think rather than what to think. So, basically, yun po yung isang yeah, anong gawin ko kay exactly. Mr. Edward. So, if exactly. you have questions po, you can unmute your microphone or you can also type your questions on the chat box. So, as of now, wala pa pong questions, Sir Edward. Maybe mm -hmm. let's give them a few minutes to think about 
what you have discussed to digest po yung mga bagay na dinescuss natin this morning. <coughs> Si Ralph, baka may tanong. Ralph, you're there? <laughs> Hello po, sir. Wala, wala pa naman so far, sir. Iisip pa. Ata. Thank you, sir, Ralph, for actively participating. <laughs> okay. Okay po, no problem po. Most active po si sir, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, from where are you? Are you from Mindanao or what? Uh, Mindanao, Luzon. Sir. Kalookan. Yes po. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Hello? 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 Sir Jason? Yes, Sir Jason. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. I am Jason from Bukidon. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, I can hear. Okay. Uh, my question, sir, is uh, in most of the problems that were presented earlier in your discussion, uh, most of them concerns uh, topics coming from algebra. Would this, uh, would this uh, solo model be also applicable if we are uh, discussing topics from geometry or other branches? Uh, okay. You, you mean to say, can we also have... Mm, my answer there is... Definitely, it should be definitely because the the solo model was conceived by Biggs and Collis uh, across all domains. We have also in other in other subjects. Now, if you are talking about mathematical representations mm -hmm. in 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 geometry, in in, in in elementary math, in in other subjects, uh, maybe for now you cannot think of how to. You cannot think on how to do this, but time will come. Time will come na magdigest ito because uh, my 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 sharing is it is more on giving the starting points. So I have presented some starting points. Now I am hoping that uh, participants will build on these starting points and find a way on how to do so such thing in other 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 areas okay oh, thank you sir thank you so much yeah, yeah. Sir. Uh, something is is let us not close doors it could be done it could be done okay it could be done in yes, yes. Siguro yes, it digest it, yes. it digest nothing please build on it build on it and and you can uh, thank you sir I I have uh, I have seen in entry about about fractions. I have seen in elementary about fractions, pero yung different ways of representing fractions parang nasa ano lang siya, nasa visual representation. Uh, for example, nag branch siya into circle, tapos sa circle na yan, i drawing mo kung ano ang itsura ng three fifths ganon sa circle na yan. Tapos, yung isang branch naman, nag-branch siya into nag-branch siya into five uh, five pebbles, maybe five pebbles. Tapos, i-drawing mo kung ano ang itsura. So, nag-branch. Yung multiple representation doon ay mostly visual. Kasi nga elementary naman, no? Mostly visual. Yung example na pita ko naman, I, I, I like to I like to do some sort of uh, visual, ang hindi lang nagawa, siyempre yung physical, yung manipulative, hindi, di ba? Yun, yung hindi nagawa. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yung nagawa yung abstract, pero tayong y equals mx plus b. Uh, yung mga, yung mga ganong tipo, that's why I am saying build on it. You can... Okay? Hello, sir. sir There's a question mm -hmm. in the chat. I think it's sir. I have some questions here. Mm -hmm. Sir, um, is it necessary for the students to uh, have their works to represent in five ways? Your uh, discussed five ways, but and how can we evaluate their work? The question is: Is it is it necessary? Yes. Yes. Ah. 
hindi naman hindi naman hindi naman necessary na dapat mag-appear yung mag-appear yung five ways ang ang goal lang ng multiple representation if i'm going to make use of multiple representation as a way to have a formative formative assessment so meaning to say mm. my goal there as the teacher is to see how my students thinking to to see some misconceptions that they have oh. to see where they are now okay then okay. uh hindi ko kailangan puntosan it is not necessary mm. that i i need okay. to give points the point there is oh, kapag nakuha ko na yung kanilang mga outputs at bumalik sa akin then uh, i am going to look at already some yung mga errors na nangyari and from mm. the errors uh, i think magandang masarap i-discuss yung errors sa klase kasi oh paano matututo kung hindi magkamali so kailangan magkamali okay okay, okay. So we need sure. to we need to support kapag yung estudyante na nag struggle we need to mm. support the struggle uh, we need to uh, lead them out of the struggle for example based on solo taxonomy they are at the pre-structural level walang ma-identify na information okay mm. okay tapos kapag face to face classroom ito napansin mo na walang ma-identify na information then you're going to ask questions that will lead that student to to the structural level magtanong ka anong nakikita mo sa problem anong information ang nakikita mo sa first sentence anong sinasabi ng first sentence tapos kapag sinabi na niya na uh, si ano lang naman nag-shake hands daw si Donald sa kanyang mga sa kanyang mga ano sa kanyang mga is, uh, kaibigan then that is already one information at least na move mo siya from pre-structural to structural kasi mayroon na siyang information na isa na na-identify okay so yes, ganun so sometimes you don't need to you don't need to give points if sa kanilang mga ginagawa. At yung tanong, kailangan bang mag-appear yung lima? Not necessarily yes. mag-appear. Ah. Okay. Sinabi ko nga kanina, I have seen one in LMP, nag-branch siya, hindi naman sa limang, it is not on the five ways, not, not on the five ways, nag-branch lang siya, pero yung branches niya ay nasa visual. Pictures lang. Okay. Yung, yung mga branches. Different situations of three fifths. Yan. A follow-up question, sir. Yeah. Can I have? Uh, in context of the modular learning in depth ed, how can we incorporate these uh, multiple representations, given that the modules are already provided by the depth ed? Ah, is is the module already a Bible that we need to follow? No, yes, sir. We can exercises. <laughs> <laughs> is it a Bible? Or if a bowl tapos kaya naman, then you have uh, in my in my view take on that is it has something to about academic freedom. Why this is my class? I know my students. This is the way I want yes. to to let them deal. Okay. Mm. Then I can always I can I can always mal nga yung iba di ba module? Hey, I yes, yes, yes. So uh, I I that the mode is not a Bible that we need to follow. Okay, sir. Noted. As is Thank you. According to ch uh, chapter and verse. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, I sir. Thanks. From, from Darren Gailo. Sir, can we consider the solo model as levels of conceptual understanding? <clears throat> conceptual understanding in the solo, it, they, this conceptual understa understanding corresponds to relational and extended abstract. The procedural understanding corresponds to uh, structural and multi-structural. Basta ito yung procedural understanding na understanding without thinking. Ha? Yung, yung ano lang, sinusundan lang yung uh, formula, pero kung ano yung formula, parang yung kung ano yung formula, ang intindi lang sa formula ay putok lang sa bato, tapos kailangan gamitin kasi sinabi, you are working at the multi-structural level or unistructural level. Conceptual understanding, dapat nasa relational level ka or extended abstract. Okay? 
Uh, Darren Gailo. Are there any questions, po? Sir, may I ask? Yes, ma. I sir. Sir, Is this? Po. Ah, sir, Alvin. Yes, yes, Alvin. Sir, uh, with regard to the question just a while ago, given by a, a certain participant about uh, mm -hmm. how to deal with uh, the activities that you have given us, mm. first probably I can use uh, rubric or just in case uh, uh, if a certain student uh, promoted to certain level in which uh, he has finished everything, well certainly we can actually give uh, additional points or um, extra points for for the job well done, right? Mm -hmm. And with respect to the module, <laughs> well, as you are saying, sir, the module is not actually a Bible that we have to follow. In our case, in uh, Quezon City, we are actually obliged to make other worksheets and activities that would uh, supply the students with additional activities in their module. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. Alternative. Sir L.A. Mom April. Wala na pong questions. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any more questions, uh, we shall now proceed sa evaluation. Sir L.J. Meron pa pong ah. nag-raise ng... Oh, meron. Sir May, uh, I'd just like to give you a uh, kung, kung comment or just a takeaway from your presentation, sir. Kasi sayang naman pag... Uh, puro tanong lang, okay naman. Some affirmation or <laughs> short comment. Sir, introduce yourself muna. Paano? Okay po. Uh, by the way, I am Richard Casanes. I'm a teacher in here in Malaybalay City, Bukidnon. Oh, in Bukidnon. Mm -hmm. so, so glad to join your, uh, this webinar. So just mm -hmm. a comment, I guess, uh, with, uh, with your presentation. Right? First of all, just uh, thank you for that. And really taking time to discuss this uh, multiple representation. But for me, I guess it's more on really the, the importance of allowing the students to think critically, not just accepting what the teacher is being present, uh, what the teacher is presenting. Right. Uh, it's allowing them really to make use also of their own um, faculties mm -hmm. uh, to make the teaching learning more um, creative, collaborative, and more enriching or engaging. Not yes, just yes. for the, a certain student, but also for other, um, for the classmates and even for the teacher to be challenged to think more also with this. And yes, yes. Yeah, and thank you for this and looking forward for more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, then. Sir, pwede, pwede magtanong, sir. You know, say, introduce yourself, sir. Sir Ralph, oh. student na sir. <laughs> no. Talaga? <laughs> uh, sir, ask ko lang. So, yung, ay hindi, hindi naman siguro sa question. Parang, uh -huh. ay hindi, tama question. Since yung solo model is parang nakita ko, ay, yes. as the presentation parang more on sa activity, is it possible na pwede rin siya maging structure for delivering a lesson? Yung? Solo model. Ah, I mean, the structure in, I mean, dun sa pag-present ng lesson. The, ito po. Okay. Okay, sige. Uh, okay. The, the solo stands for structure of observed learning outcomes. Okay. Uh, since it is a structure for the observed learning outcomes, there should be an outcome that we need to evaluate kung nasaan ang level ng pag ng, ng thinking. Uh, by the way, ang solo model that is applicable case to case, okay? We, we do not say that the child is relational in thinking process all the time. The child is at the unistructural level of thinking all the time because it's case to case. It depends on the demand of the task. Ah, uh, ito. Okay, so kung yung task, if the cognitive demand is for the relational level of thinking, then the child is invited to do also relational response. Pero kapag yung tanong, yung task ay in, 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 
kung yung task ay medyo mahina, mahina ang mahina din yung response na maibibigay. Okay? Ngayon, kung ang gusto mo Sir Ralph ay you want to attain, you want to see an output or an outcome at the relational level of thinking, so dapat ang pagtuturo mo andun ka din sa relational level of thinking. So dapat kung dibdiban ang task mo, dapat dibdiban din ang turo mo. Hindi ka pwedeng magturo ng dibdiban tapos ang task wala kwenta. <laughs> Hindi ka rin yes, pwedeng I, I agree. Yeah, hindi ka mag pwedeng magturo ng walang kwenta tapos napaka cognitively demanding ang task na ibinigay mo. Okay? okay. Dadalhin ka okay. sa korte ng mga estudyante kapag yun ay nagkataon. <laughs> so, ngayon, paano gawin yung so model sa sa class? Uh, solo model, ipakita mo na ikaw na teacher ay relational thinker din. Ang mga information na binibigay mo, rinirelate mo sa isa't isa piecemeal. Okay? Yes, Yung ganyan. Kasi ang relational, uh, relational level of thinking based on the solo taxonomy, you should be relating information. So dapat, kung ang, you like the students to be relating information, dapat ikaw din sa pagtuturo mo, nagre-relate ka ng uh, information. Okay? Sir Ralph, it's your gent in the classroom on how you do it. Okay po, sir. Thank you po. <laughs> okay? That is okay. the that is the that is the reason behind lesson planning. Yes po. And in lesson planning, it is always important to foresee. Anticipate. What will you anticipate? Anticipate possible responses. Anticipate possible errors. Anticipate possible misconceptions. Tapos yun ang bantayan mo kapag nag-submit sila ng task. Okay po, sir. Okay? Now, Sir Ralph, uh, going back to the task kanina, um, ang, ang akin lang, parang feeling ko kasi, uh, may mga teachers talaga na matindi sa pag score <laughs> Ang tinatanong mo naman doon ay, kunwari sa activity natin kanina, ilang weeks bago ka makasave? Yes po. Ilang weeks bago ka makasave? Bakit? Uh, yung, yung solution naman, it is leading to the answer even if you don't write the domain, correct? Yes po. So I, I think, in my case personally, I don't, I, I, don't know with, I don't know with you colleagues on how you do it, but personally, uh, that is something that I will just highlight in the I will just highlight in the uh, discussion, or that is just something that I will put on the on the paper of paper of paper of the child. But if you're going to ask me to rate that paper, I will rate very good. Yes, what? Okay. Yes, what? Yeah. Uh, mayroon ding ano? Mayroon ding may narinig din ako na very good. Have you heard of very good wrong answer? <laughs> Very good wrong answer and very bad correct answer. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Ah. Di pa sir. <laughs> very, <clears throat> very good wrong answer. Going back to the savings kanina. Actually, hindi, 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 hindi ko na na-discuss. Ang sagot doon kapag nag, nag uh, 15.52 weeks ata, 15.62 weeks, makakasave ka in 15.62 weeks. That is what will come out in computation. But you need to make sense. 15.62, we are not talking here about 15.62. We are talking here about the number of weeks. So you should not be giving me 15.62. Kapag ang sinagot ng isodyante doon ay 15.62 weeks, then that is a very good wrong answer because the answer was not taken in the context of, you know, saving it by weeks. Correct? So dapat ang sagot, oh, oh, dapat ang sagot doon ay 16 weeks. Ngayon, nagkataon na 15.62, nagkataon na round up. Maganda rin sigurong pag-isipan na pag-isipan na lalabas ang sagot na 15.2. 15, yung bang tempted ka to round up? Get me? Yes, sir. Kapag 15.2, tempted ka to round down, tapos yung bata sumagot ng 15 weeks, o oh, again, wala sa konteksto, kailangan round up. Yes, for context. Okay. That is, uh, you know, you get the ceiling of 
15.2. Da siguro palitan niyo yung ano, palitan niyo yung <coughs> may kailangang palitan sa uh, problem para mag-appear yung sagot na in usual rounding, round down, matitempt yung bata na round down. When in top, it should be rounded up. Okay? Yes. Thank you, thank you Ralph for the for the question. Thank you din sir. God bless po. Mm -hmm. Sir Edward, Sir Jason yes. is raising his hand. Baka po may tanong si Sir Jason. Yes, Sir Jason. Sir Jason. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, uh, one last... Mute ba siya? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Is, okay, one last... Is this Sir Jason? Po, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Kasi po yung multiple representations, sir. As I was listening to your presentation earlier, I can in a way, associate them with the different learning styles or the different inclinations of our learners. Uh, like for example, example, if our learner is uh, inclined with a visual spatial intelligence, then uh, perhaps he would be more inclined to do representations using graph or pictures. So uh, would you encourage, sir, that uh, in, our, in rating the learners, we should not have an objective answer? Like for me personally, hindi ko tinatanggap yung mga answers na explanation yung binibigay. Halimbawa, yung problem natin kanina about number of weeks. Kapag sinabi na, ganito lang, sir, I, I, want, I want to be presented with, with uh, a solution, a mathematical solution. So, would you say that I, I should be accepting those that are, uh, whose answers are not mathematical equations, but rather uh, they're showing, uh, I mean, they're writing their explanations in words, verbal. Would that be, mm. would that be acceptable? <laughs> You are asking if that is acceptable? Uh, if if yes, the... I mean, um, do I need? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got your point, uh, sir Jason. Kapag ang 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 type of test I multiple choice, then the student has everything at his disposal how to attack. A problem, right? If yes, yes. If you are asking that you want an algorithmic, algorithmic, well, uh, I al algorithmic uh, solution at arriving at a particular answer that is uh, what you prefer as a solution. The the algorithmic one. Kailangan ma magawa nila ang magawa nila ang procedure, ano ang gagawin kapag may estudyante na hindi nakagawa ng ganong procedure? Tama? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. In, in, in my, it depends on initial, for now, for now, for now, I will accept. Yes. For now, I will accept as long as it makes sense. Na, de na 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 defend naman niya na, na nagamit niya ang information na naibigay so what will stop me from what will stop me from uh, giving a a score which is less than uh, satisfactory and yes, uh, yes. you know sir jason in math we do not prescribe solutions yes yes we like we like a particular answer that can be attacked as much as possible by a variety of solutions because it is yes, there yes. where we do not enclose mathematical thinking processes yes yes okay yes, so if you are going to if you are going to specifically specifically identify a manner by which students can uh, attack your problem and that is by way of algorithms highly algorithmic uh, highly algorithmic procedure then it deprives thinking that is very probable from other students kung yeah nakalimutan ang formula the mental block or whatsoever now uh, for now to answer your question yes i will accept i do not know if there will come a time that i will i will Oops. ignore other solutions i do yeah. not know I, I i i haven't yet experienced that maybe maybe that will come and if that will come there should be a highly compelling reason for me to do it 
Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thank you. Mm -mm. Thank you, Dean Sir Jason. <clears throat> Hey, thank you so much, Sir Edward, for answering all the questions. Thank you rin po sa ating mga participants who actively participated and engaged in the discussion.